Are we live? Hey, we're live. <laughs> Today we have Michael Shoulders. Where are you, Michael Shoulders? I'm in Clarksville, Tennessee, a home of the 101st have, Airborne Division. We have um, Sneed Collard. Where are you? Missoula, Montana, where it is raining today, and we love it. And we don't have Steve Swinburne. He's moving a refrigerator, which I don't think is a good excuse. So we should kick him out of the group, vote him off the island. <laughs> we have Mike Artell. Hey, guys. How you doing? Where are you today, Mike? I'm in uh, Covington, Louisiana, near New Orleans, down here for the Louisiana, Southern Louisiana Humidity Festival. <laughs> and I'm in South Boston. Hey, today, on Friday, Author Day, we decided we might talk about insects today. So I was trying to think of, uh, I think, well, insects are six-legged creatures, but I think we should include all bugs, okay? So arachnids, harvestmen, insects, true bugs, I think we should include all of them. How's that? So Perfect. want me to do some science to start off? Yeah. Well, like an ant has three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And then, um, let me see, a spider has a head and an abdomen, head, thorax combined, right? And an abdomen, is that correct? Like Two that. parts? <laughs> and then a harvestman has it all, all three in one. So it's sort of like a crab. All three in one, head, thorax, abdomen, all as one body part. So there you go. There's my lesson for the day. How's that? That was fast. Want me to tell you a cool bug that I like? Yeah. In my book, Icky Bug Alphabet, there's a, a bug called, uh, well, it's a spider. There's a spider who uh, builds a parachute and he pulls oxygen underwater. And when he pulls oxygen underwater, he can breathe underwater. So if oh I'm not God. mistaken, there he is right there. Oh he builds a parachute oh. out of his web. He pulls the oxygen underwater and he could actually catch a fish and eat it. So there you go. The fish would wow. be little, but how's that for bug number one? Amazing. Pretty good. Amazing. Mike, you, Mike Artel, do you think I'm gonna win bug of the day? Uh, it, it's possible, but the competition is strong. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Strong. It, I know Mike Shoulders didn't write a bug book, so I don't know what he's going to do. Wow. Oh. 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 reference material. <laughs> okay. I think, I think that uh, Sneed should go next. The me? Okay. Look at that? Okay. Wow. Well, I have a little, um, a little slideshow to share with you guys, if that's okay. That's great. Yeah, and um, I wanted to show you, can you see that? Yes. yes, yes. So my interest in insects started when my dad was a PhD student and he was taking entomology, the study of insects. And he decided he was going to build the largest insect collection the class had ever seen. And so every day he dragged me out to catch insects. And by the end of his semester, he had caught over 600 insects. Wow. And, and did different impact. species, different species, different species. Yep. Wow. And, and that was indeed the largest one he'd ever seen or they'd ever built. But then, um, but then um, when I started traveling myself, I started seeing a lot of cool insects. I went to Malaysia when I was 15 and I saw this amazing grasshopper. I mean, look at the colors on this thing. Wow. Isn't wow. that mind blowing? A beautiful blue. Yeah. And then um, in 1994, I went to Costa Rica to research a couple of different books and the insects just blew me away. You had these huge walking sticks that were six or seven inches long and Katie did see how their wings have evolved to look just like leaves of the plants they're sitting on. Yeah, amazing, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm going to show. I'm going to show one just like that, Sneed. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And there were um, bioluminescent click beetles down there, army ants. You probably heard of those. And these were one of my favorites. Um, I happened to be there during insect mm, hatching season. That's the longest caterpillar I've ever seen. 
<laughs> These are called processionary caterpillars, and they all march in a line wherever they go. Ever heard that word before, processionary caterpillars? Yeah, apparently it might be an adaptation to make birds think that this thing is way bigger than they can handle or something. Right. And so there are actually about a dozen of them all marching in a line like that. It's kind of like kindergartners going back from lunch. Exactly, or, or <laughs> authors going around a conference or something <laughs> like that, you know. Right. And, uh, uh, these were maybe my favorites. Uh, these were called um, Ithamyid butterflies or clear wing wow. butterflies. And they're so cool, you can see right through their wings. And I just thought, what an amazing thing, huh? That is amazing. Wow. And so all of this inspired me to uh, include insects in a lot of books and to finally write a book about insects. And I'll read a couple passages from that later after you guys uh, share a little bit. Well, Sneed, I don't know why we invited you on. You humbled us. <laughs> Yeah, and besides, we, we all knew all of that anyway, so. I thought you did. <laughs> and humbling but... us is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have any right to write a bug book after that. I know. Wow. Well, you do, because you make it fun. And um, so anyway, the insects, you know, they're all around you. It's, it's hard not to write about them. We've all done it. So that yeah. says a lot about insects, right? Yeah. Okay, I think Mike Artel's next. Okay, guys, a um, couple things. Uh, I did, I'm gonna show you some things from this book, Backyard Bloodsuckers, and you can see some of the leading characters in that, mosquitoes and ticks and... Um, Cool. You know, you don't actually see the flea, but you get the idea that that dog is really having a hard time with it. <laughs> you had a ruin. Hey, Mike Cartel, you had to ruin our day with that title, didn't you? <laughs> you ruined, you ruined our day. What I wanted to do is, um, let me see if I can share a screen with you. Uh, let's see, share screen. Here we go. And I'm going to share because I just, I have a poem I'd like to read to you. And can you see the poem on the right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, the poem on the left is a short, sad poem about a frog who didn't pay attention while crossing the road and ended up being hit by a car. And the poem is hop, 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 bop, plop. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's sad. That's sad. That's but so this sad. Is, this, is oh. the, uh, this is the bug poem I wanted to share with you. I like insects, I like bugs, they're my pets. I give them hugs, bring them candy and corsages, give them necks and back massages. Read them books and magazines, dress them up in baggy jeans, pat them on their little heads, tuck them into buggy beds. Six legs, eight legs, even more, crawling on my bedroom floor. Bugs are very cool to me, I love entomology. Oh, and I know, right. technically, I know technically eight legs is not a bug, but um, I needed to rhyme, so I went with it. So that was that. <laughs> and uh, let me stop sharing this screen here now. Let's see. And uh, I'm going to do a little author um, author quiz with you. Okay. Stop sharing. Okay. And yeah. Can anybody tell me? what that is. Oh, I think I know. Sneed? Well, I, is it a flea? It certainly is a flea. It <sighs> certainly is. And fleas are very hard, like when you get them, you can't just squeeze them and kill them. Like you They're do not that big. Uh, fleas uh, are, are vertically uh, oriented so that if you squeeze, it's kind of like a fish. If you squeeze them like that, they just get thinner. So way to go, Sneed. I'm going to give you, um, we're going to move up, the, um, move up the scale here. Somebody said it's an armadillo flea. <laughs> All right. Did that flea bite you, Mike? I mean, that was one big flea. It, it, I know it, one. My, it, my in laws were here. They brought it with them. <laughs> oh, that, yes. guys? That's a tick. That is a deer tick. You're right. Uh, Steve would know all about that, too. Uh, uh, yeah. I guess theory two. That is a tick, and I'll give you one more, and then we'll do we'll do uh, we'll do others later. But this is the one. I'll give you I'll give you a little 
qu a, a little hint. This is the one teachers hate the most. Oh, oh, actually, okay. that is a head lice. That's right. There it is, right there. Wow. That's right. You would starve to death on your head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it would. It would. All right. Well, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love it. That's pretty good, Jerry. All right. So um, now, right. Mike Cartel, do you have those in your house all the time? Those models, those. Or did uh -huh. you buy those well, yesterday? I, have, I bought your, bags bought and bags of them. I give them to kids sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, who's? Uh, I've got Mike no, Joel. We'll you're up next. I'm up next. All right. Well, gentlemen, I uh, I'm going to share my screen. And I uh, hope you can see it now. Uh, let me press play. Ooh. Yeah, we got it. All right. I have uh, two books published with Cherry Lake, uh, one on the Katie did and one on the cicada. And uh, Mikey, let I, me... Mikey, I never knew you did those books. Me? Uh oh. Those are uh -oh. you kept that from us. Can you hear the alarm clock? No. No. You can't hear music? No. Wonderful, because there's a song playing, because a lot of times I do a rap song with this, and I don't <laughs> want it to play. So it is going to bug me uh, listening to it, uh, but, it'll, uh, but it'll go off after a while, maybe. So uh, this has nothing to do with this. you should rap for like two minutes. Yeah, you should rap, Mike. No, thank you. All right. So this has nothing to do with insects other than to make a point, I love the uh, Easter eggs that I find when I'm researching a book. And these are, uh, the, the two on the right are cave fish. You notice no eyes. They don't need eyes. Wow. The, the one on the left is a regular fish, a minnow or something. I don't know what shad, but uh, it's finding these interesting things about insects or fish or just the world that we, uh, in which we live. So you can see the ones on the right, they don't that they, they do not get any light. Now, some of the cavefish I read are born with eyes. But as they grow, they're covered over. Oh my. And and they actually lose their eyes that they had. That they were useless anyway. Wow. But look how translucent the one on the bot uh, the bottom is. So this is just this just to show something cool uh, about research. Well, what is that? Whoa. That's oh, a cicada. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's the, the exoskeleton of a cicada. You find those, of course, on trees or yeah. fence posts. Ooh. Hey, Jerry, Jerry, do, do you get those up north? I mean, the, 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 the little skeletons? The... Yes. You do? Yeah. Yep. We get them. Okay. And they're uh, really and loud. They're like the loudest insects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who said that? Me, Jerry. Yeah, they're the loudest, one of the loudest insects. Uh, one of the facts in my book I'll share in just a minute. I'm going to compare them to something we all have around the house. Most of us, not Jerry. Uh, they're the eyes, and you can see three smaller ones. Uh, it's just so much fun doing the research for a book. and the things I never noticed the with. three small eyes. Yep. Are those called Ocelli or Ocelli or something like that? You know, I, I think you're right. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I have forgotten so much about the books I write, you know, <laughs> uh, and especially technical names like that. Uh, you're probably much better at that than I am. Uh, guess what those are going to do? Wow. Those are going to feed somebody. Ooh. Really? Oh. Those are that that whole tray behind there is somebody's meal. So here's a little bit of insight into working with an editor. Amy, people eat cicadas. Look on YouTube. Y'all may want to do this later. Look on YouTube for eating cicadas. And so I told this is an, a little email snippet. You know, I thought long and hard about putting that in, but thought better of it. If you want that in a section, I'll be happy to include that. She said, no, thank you. Oh, she'll man. pass. I don't know, Mike. I like it. Hey, there, there you go. Katie did. There you go, Sneed. Yeah. Wow. 
Now, uh, the other book that Katie did, hey, uh, Sneed, I'm going to ask you, because I'm not going to ask Jerry or Mike. I'm sure they won't know. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm actually putting you on the spot. What's the fastest way to tell a Katie did from a grasshopper? Uh, bite into it, see what it tastes like. No. <laughs> no, I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, I love the look of this one. Yeah. See his thorns. That looks like right out of Star Wars. Yeah, it does. All right, here's a, here's a good picture to show the difference. Look at their antenna. Okay. Yeah. The Katie dids is as long as usually as long as its body. The grasshopper do that. generally has a, they have a very short. So there's a Katie did. Yeah. And there's a grasshopper. Ah, I did not know that. That's a nice graphic. I did not know that that's either. A nice graphic. Huh. Yeah. And so that's that's such a fun thing. Last thing. Where are their ears? Uh, on the side of their body. Their feet. Wait a minute. I'm trying to get a little pointer. I've never done a pointer. Is it Let that dark see. spot? It's the dark spot on the legs. Wow. Oh, nice. That's how they uh, sense vibration and sound. Wow. Cool. Not there. She could it's use there. corrective lenses. <laughs> so, um, all right, guys, let me stop sharing that. That was awesome, Mike. Nice, Mike. Well so, done. So I do have a book uh, about the Katie did. And this is really not like widely released. The, these are, uh, Cherry Lake has a, a series of books that are basically nonfiction things for libraries. Uh, uh, you know, they're a little bit expensive because they don't make very many of them. And so even though this is only... I don't know, 20 something pages. It's, uh, it's, they're like 24 bucks, kind of prices uh, parents out of it or grandparents. Do they do paperbacks? Are... No. Oh, no. Okay. So they are often louder than a lawnmower. Wow. Wow. The male is often as loud as a lawnmower. Mm. All right. Amazing. Ciao. Grazie. Okay. Grazie. Ciao. We interrupt this program. We have made a connection with the refrigerator repairman, the refrigerator <laughs> mover. <laughs> the refrigerator man coming. has sent in um, a video for us. Let's all pretend he's with us. Hi, hey, Mike. Hi, Steve. Steve. Hey, hey, Steve. Steve. Hey, Steve. 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 You're the man, Steve. Blink if you can hear us. <laughs> I want to know how you were unshaven this morning and you're shaving now, Steve. And then this <laughs> afternoon, you'll be having your beard again. Could you talk could louder, that. Steve? I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> we can't hear it. Start it again. You know. Jamie, love, we can't start it love again. Tech. Hey, just, just voice over, Mike Cartel. What's he saying? Um, he said, there once was a, an insect from Natchez. <laughs> no. Whose no. garments were always in patches. Hey everyone, it's Steve Swinburne yep. here in Vermont. And um, I'd like to read you a couple of insect poems this morning. Firefly. Friendly firefly, hide and seek firefly. How do you meet a mate? Flit and dash high over the grass. Sprinkle the night with light. There's a torch in your tail. See it wink, see it flash. This is from a book called Boxing Rabbits, Bellowing Alligators, and Other Courtship Poems from the Animal World. Woo! Steve, I have never seen that book before. Thank see, you for showing it to us. Snug. This is all about the dung beetle or tumble bug beetle. Tumble beetle, tumble bug. In a dung ball, her eggs are snug. She rolls the ball into a hole to keep away mouse, to keep away mole. See, she's got her eggs. They've got their eggs in the dung ball. 
and those eggs will grow. And guess what they're going to eat? From a oh. safe form in the snow. <laughs> Don't do it, guys. This has nothing to do with uh, insects, but it's a fun poem. And I thought I'd read it from a book called Ocean Soup. Barnacle Wrap. Lying on my back in the small tea feed. Let's do that again. Take two. Lying on my back in the small TP, waiting for the tide, waiting for the sea to do the filter feed, the filter feed. Waves come tumbling. I'm in the mood to open my top, snatch some food and do the filter feed, the filter feed. Don't want no crab, don't want no prawn. All I want to eat is fresh plankton and do the filter feed, the filter feed. Now I got the rhythm, dancing in the brine. Life as a barnacle is so sublime. I love the filter feed, the filter feed, the filter feed, the filter feed, the filter feed. Yeah. Woo. Excellent. Well done. Hey guys, have fun. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Thanks. thank you, Steve. Put that refrigerator down. <laughs> Call us later if you can. It's it's so miserable not having Steve here. It's almost like having him here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, you know yeah. how you said that bug had three eyes on its head there? It, I never what, knew this about hornets and wasps. Look, they have three wow. eyes. Wow, I didn't know that. So wow. they have, seriously, there's his eyes. Um, I'm trying to think. That's a hornet. And look, uh, they have three eyes. And wow. then here's a wasp. Look at this. I never knew this. So I wonder what the three eyes are for, the significance of the three eyes. No, back it off a little bit, Jerry. Back it off a little bit. Just a little bit. Wow. How's that? Yeah, good. Right there. Good. These three eyes? On the top Man, of his head. I wonder what that yeah. is. Because I mean the big eyes on the side, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that's for. Yeah. Well, you know though, right, Jerry? You know what the three eyes are for, right? No, I don't really know. Well, they have how, how about you, Mike Shoulders? Do you know what those three eyes are for? Let's see. Are you on mute, Mike? Um, I apologize. Oh, uh, when he was reading, I don't want to be heard, and then all of a sudden, bam! Oh, I forgot. <laughs> um, so, do you know what those three eyes are for on top, Mike? Oh, of course I do, but I'll let you explain it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm taking an educated guess here, but I seem to remember that they are uh, the two big compound eyes are for vision, like we have. But the three eyes are just mostly to detect light levels and I think maybe movement too. So, so oh. if a uh, predator is above them, that helps them know that. And they can also tell if it's getting to be dark or not with those three little Yeah, eyes. all right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. Yeah. All right, so I, can I ask you guys a question? Do you know the lizard, reptile, excuse me, that has a third eye? Oh, but I, I, I don't want to be a teacher's pet here. We're beating you up after class. <laughs> My friend Sneed is an honor student at XYZ Elementary. <laughs> hey, Sneed, what, what hey, is Mike, it? Go, Mike Scholes, go ahead and I'll answer. Give you a clue. Mike Scholes, I'll give you a clue. It's not What's a that? lizard. It's a ranchocephalia. Yes, yes. It's a tuatara. A tuatara, right. Did you write about Tuatara, Jerry? Yeah, he's in my reptile book. Oh, okay. I love those guys. Yeah. What a running back, Mike. For some hey, reason, hey, they survived 100 million hey, Mike years. Cartel, an island off of Mike Cartel, we're on the outside looking in. Look, hey, go ahead. You guys go ahead and just talk. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear more insect and bloodthirsty. All right, talk. here's my insect one. Ready? It's my turn. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go back, Jerry. What is the answer to your question? Did I miss it? Yeah. A tuatara. Oh, I thought that was a scientific name. Oh. A tuatara. Here. It's okay. part of a okay. group of reptiles called Renchocephalia. 
So they thought they were all extinct. Then they found one alive off the coast of New Zealand. It has a third eye on the top of its head. Wow. Okay, so, I'm sorry. There you go. Hey, here's what I got for you. Guys, I wrote a moth book. I wrote a moth book. And um, I love this guy. He's a moth that looks like a wasp. Ooh. So that's how he protects himself. Um, by looking like a wasp. So isn't that great? And you'll never guess his name. A wasp moth. Wasp moth. <laughs> so it takes real sophistication to name a creature like that. But I thought you would like that. I hope I'm not making anybody dizzy. But there's the wasp moth right there. I love there. it. It's beautiful. So there you go. Hey, um, I have something that feeds right into that. If you don't, okay. let's see, um, I'll go back to my sharing the screen here. And um, let's see um, if I can find it. I think, oh, there, I think that's the same group of critters, Jerry. Wow. I think this now, is- Now, is that a moth? It's a polka dot wasp moth or a wow. oleander moth. And nice. it's down in Florida. So yeah, yeah, let's see. Oh. Yeah, oh, I'll just show some more insects. These are from South America. And, oh, hey, Mike Shoulders, do you think that's a Katie did? You know, I, I believe it is. I can't see the antennae, but uh, yeah, I think it is. It looks like one to me. Yeah, yeah, it does to me too, but I'm not sure about it, so. Um, you know, gr uh, school kids often confuse the, 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 what I will call the basic looking, uh, Katie did, the green one. Yeah. You know, they'll catch those and they'll think they have a grasshopper. Ah, uh, because they look kind of similar. Well, yeah. Well, uh, well, yeah, when the screen comes back, I'll show you a picture. Or when it comes back around to me, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Hey, well, I also wanted to, uh, we, uh, Mike brought this up about insects that people eat. So raise your hands, everyone here, if you've eaten an insect before. I have eaten an insect. Okay, mm -hmm. what kind did you eat, Jerry? You mean on purpose? Uh, on purpose. No, on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I've eaten... Um, Ah, of the ones you buy in the pet. I've eaten a cricket. Uh, yeah, I, I and the cricket had uh, bay seasoning on it. And I ate a, um, a, one of those mealworms that uh, are lost uh, by insects. Okay. Well, before yeah. I give the screen back, I want to show you. I got to eat one um, in no. South America when I was there. Yes. No. These are big delicacies. These are palm beetle grubs. Oh. And uh, I'd always wanted to try one because people told me that they taste kind of like nuts or something. Yeah. And uh, so I wanted to try this. I shared this when I was with Jerry a couple of weeks ago, but to eat them, you have to bite behind their head so their mandibles won't pinch your tongue when you throw it in your mouth. They, yes. These are alive. They're alive, yeah. Yeah, so I did that and uh, popped it in my mouth. And you know, it did taste a little nutty, but as I mentioned to Jerry a couple of weeks ago, it mostly tastes, <laughs> tasted like a mouthful of snot. And so, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike Artel. I, I, oh, I, it's, like, oh, yeah. it's like eating a clam. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> so anyway, I, I had to share that with you. Well, in one of my books, not to interrupt here, but in one of my books, uh, I have a picture of mm. an Asian kid eating a scorpion. Oh, man. Oh, don't say anything, Sneed. <laughs> I, read, uh, I read that in China, they eat tons of scorpions, right? And as far as I could tell, my research was accurate. But I got a letter from a kid saying, that's disgusting. We don't eat those. Please remove it from your book. But I'm, stick I'm sticking with my research. By the way, Americans eat them. There's a lollipop you can buy. Yeah, I've seen those. At almost any science store or museum store, they always sell these scorpion lollipops. So Americans eat them also. So there you go.
Let like me that? let me give a plug here to a local uh, in New Orleans. If you ever get a chance, kids, if you're out there, or parents with kids, um, and you go to New Orleans, go to the Insectarium. Uh. It's, it's, it's one of the most amazing places. It's uh, this big, gigantic, uh, gray building, and inside are millions and millions, literally. Uh, of insects and they do have a cafeteria where you can buy insects you can eat too but um it, it's the most amazing place you'll see gigantic you know beetles and uh, just everything you can imagine so wow. just, hey uh, if you guys are ever in manhattan go to evolutionnyc.com evolutionnyc.com yeah and uh there's also another website godofinsects.com all right so, but evolution sells all that great stuff, you know? By the way, someone asked me, what book was that scorpion in? It's in this book, Who Would Win? Tarantula versus Scorpion. So there you go, right there. Tarantula. Are you gonna give away the answer to that? What? Who would win? Who would win? Who would win? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, but if you wanna see them fight, you can go to JapaneseBugFights.com. Japanese <laughs> You guys think I'm kidding. They took two of every bug in the world and threw them in the ring and filmed it. It's, <laughs> it's a tremendous website. Yeah, I, I just- Fights.com. I would love to have been in that business meeting where, look, I got an idea. <laughs> Let me just do my pitch here, okay? <laughs> Jeez. My favorite is like a hornet fights a praying mantis. Oh, you know who's a great fighter that I never imagined in a million years is a, a, a centipede. Uh, uh, I, w I watched a centipede um, pin, pin a scorpion down, you know? Wow. Oh. Really? Yeah. There's the matches right there. Who's doing that? Probably Jamie. Jamie's huh. doing <laughs> Click on one of them. <laughs> JapaneseBugFights.com. JapaneseBugFights.com. Yeah. Well, my my grandkids are gonna love this. Yeah. Look at that. I don't know. Pick. Let's open one of them up. Let's see them fight. No, we shouldn't do that, huh? That's. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. <laughs> it's on the web. <laughs> it's on, it's on the hey web. kids. It okay. Hey kids, teachers. <laughs> Isn't it fun researching books? Can you imagine someone? Found that from you see all the real fights down there, and you can uh, click on them. See, look at that. wow, I don't know if you could find the. I loved watching the uh, I, I love watching the centipede fight. I saw him pin down another bug because he has so many legs, he just pinned him down. Doesn't seem fair. <laughs> There's a centipede, there he is. Yeah, yeah, wow, cool. Yeah. Man. Okay, let's see who's next. Mike Gartel, you're next. All right, let me uh, let me see here. Okay, just a couple more quick ones, um, guys. What is it? Ooh, uh, a true know. bug. Well, yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah, that would be a sucking bug. But is it a bed bug? It that certainly is. is. This that's is a, a bed bug. Oh. oh, that's a bed bug? That is a bed bug right there. Hey, in all my years, I think I've been to 4,000 hotels. I've never been had a bed bug problem. Really? I hear about it all the time. Yeah, but I don't me too. Ever... I do too. All right. Well, look, I'm going to share something with you. Uh, I'm not going to compete with Steve, but years ago, I wrote this. And I'm not gonna sing, well, I'll, I'll sing it, but I won't do any music, okay? This is a song called, I'm a Mosquito. And I spelled it like that because that's a Spanish spelling. But no kidding. Go. It's, it's a tango. It goes, bum, 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 bum. I'm a mosquito. To me, your blood could taste no sweeter. I'm here to take a little bite tonight. I must have a taste of your blood. I'm a mosquito. It's true that I am a blood eater, but I am really not so bad, you see. So won't you give to me your blood? Oh, you don't really know. 
just how hungry I get. If you won't let me bite you, can I please bite your pet? <laughs> oh, I'd rather drink nectar, but I must reproduce. Right now, nectar won't help me. I need some of your juice. <laughs> I'm a mosquito. Can you help me please, Chiquita? <laughs> oh, won't you let me hear you say, see, see, that you'll give to me your blood. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you don't like what I'm drinking, <laughs> but I'll just take a small taste. Then I'll be on my way. I have only one request, that you treat me like a guest. <laughs> I'm not an ugly little pest. On second thought, maybe I am. <laughs> I'm a mosquito, and I'd really like to meet you. So won't you join me for a bite tonight? Because I must have a taste of your blood. <laughs> cha, cha, cha. cha, cha, cha. Olé, olé, olé. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. That was like the definition of a STEAM lesson right there. <laughs> that was awesome. Thanks, thanks. I can only say this. I thought you were a normal human until that poem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, somebody else is up. Uh, we have a message here from Craig Schroeder, but I don't know what the message says. I'm sorry, uh, I can't get that. Maybe someone else can grab it. We, well, we also have, we're, uh, it's Susan Hutchins' husband's birthday today. Yay. So we all, we need to give a shout out to Dan. And if he, hey, Dan. Hey, Dan, oh, happy birthday. birthday. Na, 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 na. Happy birthday to Dan. Yeah. And we hope you get bit by a mosquito. Happy <laughs> birthday to Dan. <laughs> and Craig Happy Schroeder, birthday, Dan. Yeah, Craig Schroeder said that Mike's song sounded like a Gorian chant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, played. that's really funny. Well played. Yes. <laughs> yes. I yes, think, Father I think, Atel. I think it's Father interesting, Atel. Mike. Mike, how you added uh, little word parts to the end of those to give them the uh, the flavor of uh, <laughs> of, of the, the the song. Well, thanks. Thanks. Blood. Uh, uh, I don't know if you, you had uh on, on the end of a lot of those. That's 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 a cool way of, of doing that. Oh yeah, yeah. Instead of uh, yeah. Instead of the actual word, just yeah. adding a little bit to it. Ita, ita. Yeah. Mita. Yeah. Ita. Yeah. So you're rhyming it, just throwing that on the end. Yeah. Yeah. But it's I like artistic that. license. Artistic. I'll have my artistic license revoked after this, but that's okay. Oh no, you won't. I. I you know, I smell a three act play right there. Uh, yeah, I smell a three act play. All right, there's a note. There's a note I can't read you guys. It says, uh, Mike, are you going to share your map? What does that mean? Mike, oh. Michael, are you going to share the map with Sneed? Oh, me? I guess, I guess Michael, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what map? I'm lost. So you were talking earlier about a, a, a map of something. What, what was your map? Oh, oh no, no, no. I'm going to do that offline. I'm going to do that offline. That, oh. That's not for public. Oh, not, oh okay. that's, that's not public consumption. Yeah. All right. I'll give you guys a nice story. You ready? I'll give you guys a nice bug. Or am I talking out of turn? No, go ahead. Go for it. Um, when I was doing my ant book, I learned about this. There's ants that are farmers. Uh, so they make compost and they grow their own fungus and then they eat the fungus. So there's ants that are farmers. How do you like that? Pretty cool. Very nice. Then yeah. there's storage ants. Oh. They use their vitamins to store honey. So I'm sure you guys have seen this in a book somewhere. Honey Wait, potty. That's part of his body? That's part of his body? Yeah, he during the wit. Well, what they do is they fill their abdomen with honey to store for the hive uh, over a long drought or winter. And okay. they have to drag it around all the rest all the time. They kind of just hang in the in the nest. Wow. 
Wow. So that's a, <laughs> a honey pot. And Michael Shoulders, don't say it. Don't say no, no, it. Uh, no, no. That that's the way I feel after a very, very good Italian meal. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we could I... call you Honey Pot Mike. <laughs> yeah. hey, All right, are you ready for this? This one's really amazing. When I learned this, I was like, wow, do I love writing books? Holy cow. So here's the, uh, I call them the, I think I call them the cowboy ants. They herd aphids and they make a corral and they herd aphids and they have their own cattle. Wow. Wow. Do you know wow. that one, Sneed? You know, I, I knew that the ants eat the honeydew from the aphids. And so that must be what they're doing there, huh? But they cat they herd them like cattle. I've never heard of that. Wow. Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah. So I got one amazing. more for you. There's What's ants really that unbelievable is the little bitty tiny branding irons. They're little bitty. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your ranch would have M.A., Mike Cartel, <laughs> M.A. Ranch, That's right? <laughs> That's right. Wow. All right, how about this one? There's landscaper ants. So if they don't like the area that leads up to where they live, they trim it all back so it makes harder for the other predators to get to them. Nice. Oh, gee. Wow. So there's, there's landscaper ants. Wow. So how do you like that? Very cool. Very cool. That is very cool, Jerry. That's neat. Hey, I wanted to put in a plug for insects since we're talking about insects. You know, a lot of people think there's so many insects in the world that we never have to worry about them running out. But actually, quite a few of them are threatened um, because of habitat loss and pesticides. And a great thing you can almost everyone can do is plant some native plants around their house to help the insect populations. And this, this is my kids about 10 years ago, and now we've got all kinds of really cool, um, cool plants that the insects love around our house. And this thing hatched out the other day. It really scared the, the you know Ooh. what. <laughs> and, um, That's not an insect. But Jerry, it, it's a Jerry insect. Yeah, I don't know. I, I but fortunately, it it went downtown in Missoula, and and uh, I haven't seen it since. But you know, it just shows you if if you take it has ten legs. Habitat. That's very unusual. Ten legs. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they think it's a a mutant of some sort, but they're not sure what yet. So wow. I just wanted to share that with you guys. That's very cool. <laughs> okay, who wants to go next? How about Mike? Let me, let me just, yeah, let me jump in for a second. Uh, just want to share a picture of uh, uh, that. That is one of the uh, Katie did that's often uh, mistaken for a grasshopper because it's green and it looks like it. Or, or that one there. Look at the antenna, how long it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have right. those so, where you right. live, Mike Shoulders? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, they're they're not common. They're not common. Yeah. You know, but but yeah, they are here. Um, also, the only other thing I want to say is, uh, we, uh, Sneed and I have written a state alphabet book. And Sneed, I pulled your book out a second ago, and I went through it to see if you had any of the uh, insects of. Uh, Montana listed. Do you have a, an official state insect there? Oh, is it the morning cloak butterfly? Did you find oh. that? No, no, I didn't. I didn't see an insect in here. That's why I was just curious because uh, my books, I have all four of them listed in two of my books. Oh, I don't so remember this, actually. So, so this, I'll look this while you're talking, just a second. Well, the state of Tennessee has four official state insects. So the boys and girls that are listening may want to do some research as to if they have an official state insect, uh, what it is or what, what they are and perhaps why they have them. Like one of ours, Jerry, is the, uh, the ladybug. Yeah. So uh, how, do, how do ladybugs help farmers? Why are they important to farmers? 
They have corrals to no. They eat aphids. They eat aphids. Oh, I was going to say, they eat pests. Yes, yes. And so, by the uh, way, that, that's... I got bit by a ladybug, and I had no idea they could bite you so badly. Ladybugs Ooh. bite? I didn't know that. Bite. Hey, I I'm think not... I found it, Mike. Is, is this an insect here? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. How many legs? Yeah. No, 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 no. That only has four legs. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> I guess I didn't put it in. <laughs> Insectosaurus. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a requirement, Sneed. It wasn't a requirement. Oh, well, uh, I feel bad you know. now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you love insects. Uh, do you have a state bird in there? Uh, what is our state bird? I think it's a meadowlark, which is kind of boring because like 18 other states also have a meadowlark as their state bird. Um, but I think our state I is understand that how like ten, I never could understand how like twenty states could have the same bird state bird. Yeah, yeah. We need it. We definitely have other more interesting birds. What What's the state um, insect in Louisiana and Massachusetts? Louisiana is a honeybee. Oh wait, wait a minute. Ah. Oh, yes. Oh, it's oh the insect, but it's a chickadee bird. Oh, okay. Okay. Actually, I think the mockingbird, I'm not sure the bird is, I think it's a mockingbird. I can check that. Okay. Uh, this is, this is from, uh, uh, B is for Big Sky Country, written by Sneed Collard. Another welcome Montana animal oh. is our state bird, the Western Meadowlark. Uh, uh, Sneed, I should, uh, there you it's go. On, it's on the state flag. It's a brown pelican. Is a state oh, bird. Oh yeah, my favorite bird. That's a great one. I guess that is a I great guess, bird. I guess we're off of insects a bit, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Can I show one more insect that I thought was really cool? Absolutely. Really Whose cool. show cool is it? Like... It's your show, Mike. <laughs> it's yours. See this? Green ants versus army ants. Yeah. Green oh. ants. Wow. The green ants live in Australia in trees, and the army ants live in South America and Africa. Look at the different size of the eyes, huh? Well, that's a soldier army ant, and then the regular army ants are blind anyways. Wow. But I wanted to show you guys this because I found it so amazing. The green ants build homes with leaves. They cut the leaves. They measure them. They're like engineers. And how do they glue the leaves together? Saliva? They, they suck a little fluid out of their larvae. Oh! And they use that for glue. So they don't kill the larvae, they just suck a little fluid out of the larvae. <clears throat> and they use that to glue the leaves together. Wow. Is that the most unbelievable story? That is. That's, that's, that's amazing. It's the exact opposite. Go. It's the exact opposite in human. The kids suck off of the parents and <laughs> amazing. They oh. can't go to Aubuchon hardware. <laughs> they can't go to True Value and buy some glue. So they, wow. they suck a little fluid out of the larvae. You know, Jerry, I got stung by a bunch of those when I was in Australia. I was trying to take a picture of one of their nests and I had backed up against some of them. And all of a sudden my like legs just went on fire. And I had no idea they could sting like that, but it, wow. it was I bet it. I bet it wasn't a bite. I bet it was uh, acid. Oh, it might've been. Really? Might have been. I know fire ants, fire ants don't bite you. They spray or they pee a little acid on you and that's why it burns. Oh, okay. Okay. Like if you're in Florida and fire ants get on your leg, they're actually spraying acid on you. I didn't know that. But I forget which end they do it from. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> me either. Wait a minute. <laughs> I've got another question now. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Never mind. Hey, I, I, I don't know the time, you guys, because I'm on my phone. So that's 58. 58. I think we've, all, we've gone almost a whole hour. So yeah. how about how about if I take a break and you guys finish up? Think of a good ending. 
Thank you, teacher. All right, I guess I'll start. Hey, <laughs> thank you, teachers, for all the homeschooling you've done. Thank you, parents, for all your homeschooling. We hope you enjoy the show with us authors, children's book authors. And I would personally like to thank uh, Mike Shoulders for coming on so regularly, Sneed College for coming on, Mike Artell, and Steve Swinburne, who was a refrigerator repairman today. <laughs> <laughs> anything you guys want to say no just tell the teachers that as they get toward the end of the school year um you know there's a lot of you know apprehension about what's going to happen next school year and um you'll be you'll be getting that over the summer but try not to let that ruin your summer you you've worked hard all year and uh give yourself a permission to enjoy the time off here during the summer until, until they kick off for the next school year yeah, use it to read, read, read. Read, read, read. Really interesting facts. How about Mike Shoulders? You going to say anything? Yeah, no, uh, this is a weird time. Uh, none of us will ever forget this. Uh, it's difficult. Uh, we can certainly uh, spend some of this time with books and learning. None of us will be as smart as Sneed Collard, but we can all try. We can easily be as smart as Mike Artell and certainly much smarter than me. But uh, yeah, it's all there in books. Uh, there's fun, there's games, there's learning. Uh, books can make but you laugh I and cry. I forgot to thank someone. Who's that? Thank you, Insects, for being my best-selling book of all time. Wow. Great really? title. Thank you, Bob. Uh, all, thank you, all you insects yeah. for letting me write a really cool book. Well, that, that's a great lead in. I just second everything everyone else is saying. Uh, you kids out there, you are doing an amazing job adapting to this, probably better than the adults are. And um, I just want to thank you guys for uh, putting on such a great show here and all you teachers. And like everybody said, read, read a lot. You know, that's how you get to know all this cool stuff. And then when you go out in the world, you just, you recognize things and you can put it all together. And one great thing about lockdown is it gives you time to explore outside a little bit more. So get out there and look at it. Use your time to explore as many things as you can. Become a lifelong learner. Bye everybody, thank you. Thank you, Rusty. Uh,